This game is all about getting young people aged 14 and over to explore their attitudes, beliefs, and values around topics like bodies, body image, consent, pleasure, porn, and sexual identity. Of course, everyone learns differently, and this game opens up discussion in different ways. It gets facts across, sure, but as we know, not all of sex education is an exact science, and there aren't always easy answers. So this game creates a safe space for kids to discuss those parts of sex ed that are up for debate. It can also animate the room by giving students something physical to do. The beauty of this game is that because it's child-centered, it lets the students do the talking. It's an icebreaker, both for your students and for you. We've created sex ed on the cards with a variety in mind, and it has three different types of cards. Question cards are quiz questions that test and build students' knowledge. Debate cards kickstart discussion and let students explore their values. And challenge cards get students learning by experience, putting their skills into action. The pack suggests various different modes of gameplay to suit you and your group. You could choose to use the cards as conversation starters and get your students talking each topic over. You might split your group into two and have each team collaborate to win the most points. Or you might organize into pairs and get each to compete against the others, maybe for a prize. Some of the cards have no right or wrong answer, just like in real life. The game asks the other players in the group to adjudicate. And so through normative learning, you'll help your students form their own perspectives and beliefs. What I want to do with our remaining time is get you thinking about how you can use different types of learning to put together a well-rounded sex ed experience. And the first of these is knowledge building. Let's test ourselves. Pause the video now and see if you can answer this question. Here is the answer. Gender identity, of course, means how you feel or think about yourself as a man, woman, or different gender. The answer box also helps us define sex and sexual orientation, and it directs students and facilitators to the amazing Genderbread resource, which we can recommend checking out. Now try another. Pause and see if you can work out the answer to this question. Yes, it's 75%. And of course, the knowledge here isn't in the number, but in the definition of orgasm and the orgasm gap and in the seeds of thought that this might sow in students' minds. So what have we gleaned? In sex ed, it's a lot about myth busting. And you'll notice that many of the cards have got red herring options that act as myth busters. We, uh, we first need to acknowledge those common misconceptions and then dispel them without making our students feel silly. And this is a great way to do that. Signposting is key. And more often than not, our cards signpost to digital resources on everything from internet safety and contraception to gender equality. We also list these resources out in the pack so that teachers can use the signposted websites for a scavenger hunt. What they would do is direct students to find the most helpful answers they can to any questions they were unsure about during play. You'll remember debate cards let students feel their way to a set of personal values and beliefs. Sometimes they do this by posing a hypothetical scenario like this one. Pause the video and read these examples to decide what you think. You'll have seen that this way of exploring healthy relationships really puts students and their lives at the center of their learning. Sometimes we ask students for their opinion on pop culture, as in this example. Here again, we let students set the agenda. Whatever's getting them worked up about is what they debate, whether that's racial stereotyping, sexual ethics, or Disney romance. So what techniques have we seen here? We use distancing techniques like hypotheticals and agree-disagree statements to help students to distance and depersonalize to limit their feelings of awkwardness. Asking what advice would you give is a great way to yield openness and, and honesty in your students. Secondly, the mechanics of gameplay here help quieter students to, to come out of their shell and we support learners of all 
different styles and personalities. Finally, to support all of this, there has to be a robust scene setting process. In this pack, we recommend the rock technique uh, to help students understand that opinions aren't good or bad, just different. Now we come to the fun bit, our challenge cards. Let's dive in. So grab yourself a pen and paper, pause the video and try this one out. When they finish this task, students will see that what unites these concepts is that they're very hard to define. It sets people thinking in a really non-didactic way. And shouldn't what we in the UK call relationships in sex education allow students to flex their skills a bit? Pause the video and try this one out. Maybe your lesson will be the first time that students get to try out their language uh, and communication around relationships in a safe space. So what do these challenge cards teach us about teaching sex ed? This is where humour, fun and drama come into play. And as we know, the most memorable lessons are the ones that stick. Play also allows emotions to be suspended while learners work through the issues. It's a great way of learning um, with a conflict-free environment in a subject that comes really loaded with differing religious and cultural perspectives. Finally, we wouldn't expect students to get in a car and drive without a lot of practice. And the same applies to healthy relationships and communication. Give your students the space to do this and you could change their lives. What makes Sex Ed on the Cards such a useful, inclusive, and fun way to engage kids aged 14 and over? This game lets kids play their way through tricky sex education topics. It's made for a generation that cares deeply about equality, diversity, and social justice. So equip them with the facts and encourage them to seek out more. Help your students improve their knowledge. For young people, managing online pressures like sexting and porn comes with the territory. After all, they are digital natives. Sex Ed on the Cards acknowledges kids' possible exposure to explicit material. It inspires face-to-face -face exchanges about issues that are coming up for them online and in real life. So help your students develop digital literacy and critical thinking. Young people are often put off by a top-down teaching style and they're sensitive to being patronized. That's why in teaching about sex and relationships, it's crucial that the approach is child-centered. So help your students explore their values and prepare for real life experiences. Here's a takeaway point. Even as we teach this generation of digital natives, we can also learn a lot from them. Learning is a two-way street.